Welcome everyone. My name is Mia Bayes and I am the director of the BFI National Lottery Filmmaking Fund. We have a new name and really grateful for pe people being here. For those who are non-sighted, I uh, have long brown hair. I just got a nice haircut, especially for this launch. And I have got a kind of quite sparkly um, uh, black shoulder padded with, with sparkly buttons top on. And I am really happy to be here. And I've been 16 months in this job. And this is the result of a lot of people's work. And you will meet some of the team shortly. Um, I would like to introduce actually the team first. So let's, um, let's hand over to the team to welcome you, introduce themselves and self-describe, and then we'll get on with the session. Let's start with you, Morgana. Hi, I'm Morgana Melvin. I am the Production Inclusion Manager in the Film Fund or Filmmaking Fund. Um, I am a woman of mixed race heritage with shoulder length dreadlocks and a beige jumper. And I have a lot of jungle plants behind me. Um, I'll hand it over to Louise. Hi, thanks, thanks Morgana. I'm Louise Ortega. I'm the Senior Production Development Executive for the Filmmaking Fund. Uh, I've got mid-length black and grey hair and I'm wearing glasses and a denim shirt um, and I'm in quite a bright room, lucky me. Um, uh, I'd like to hand over now to introduce myself to Emma. Hi, so my name is Emma and I'm the second senior production and development executive at the uh, Filmmaking Fund. Um, I'm wearing a black jacket, a white shirt, I'm of African heritage and I have short hair. Hi, I'm Harriet Finney. I'm Deputy CEO at the BFI and I also look after the Corporate and Industry Affairs Directorate where we look after the lottery funding strategy. Um, I am a uh, middle-aged woman uh, and I am white. I have short brown hair. I'm wearing a black shirt and a cream jumper and sitting in a dimly lit basement room. Great to see so many people have joined the webinar this afternoon. Um, so just before we head into the presentation on the new filmmaking fund, I wanted to give you a quick reminder um, of some of the factors that helped us shape the BFI's new 10-year strategy, Screen Culture 2033, um, which really sets out our commitment as an organisation to creating the conditions in both which both screen culture and the screen industries can thrive. Um, can we go to the next slide, please, Mia? So firstly, a reminder of who we are and what we do. So at our very core, we are a cultural charity and we are governed by Royal Charter. We're also a distributor of national lottery funding. Um, at the BFI, we allocate 2.7% of the overall good cause funding pot. Um, that equates to about 45 million pounds a year as we head into this new lottery funding strategy. Um, and just to be clear, that is a reduction across the board um, on what we were distributing in the previous programme. We're also the government's lead body for film and the moving image. Um, and that is where we do a lot of the work, which is looking at how we develop really, really high level and impactful policy and evidence work uh, on behalf of the sector. Next slide, please. Oh, so um, in terms of our mission at the BFI, again, just kind of thinking about high level, what was framing our screen culture strategy um, is this idea that we want to create the conditions in which screen culture and the UK screen industries can thrive, both in the UK, but also around the world. Um, and the way that we do this is as a cultural charity, we look after the National Film and Television Archive, which is the world's largest collection of moving image. We're also a cinema and a streamer. So we actually feel the varying patterns in audience behavior. We operate five screens in total from our 30 seat uh, st studio cinema at BFI South Bank. And we also operate the biggest IMAX screen in the UK. And we have BFI Player, which has doubled subscribers since 2019 um, and is really an extraordinary place to go and discover the very best of UK and international independent cinema. 
And we also put on festivals. We put on the BFI London Film Festival, which has a growing UK wide footprint. And we also have BFI Flair, our LGBTQIA plus festival, which is up and running uh, until the weekend, both in venue at BFI South Bank and also online. So whether through our physical programmes or our online platforms or through our festivals, we are committed to supporting independent cinema. Um, moving on to look at our purpose. So when we constructed screen culture and we thought about how we were going to look at uh, the national lottery funding strategy we took a moment to think actually what is it that is going to frame that strategy going forward and and we came up during lockdown we spent a lot of time on zooms as an organization working with stakeholders across the industry and we feel that our purpose is encapsulated by the fact that we believe society needs stories film television and the moving image bring them to life helping us to connect and understand each better, each other better. And I can't think of a better expression of that than the new BFI Filmmaking Fund. So with the big picture framing in mind, so our mission, our purpose and our vision, um, we will move to look at national lottery funding. And I think just again, by way of background to this, since our last strategy was published in 2017, a huge amount has happened. The size of the industry has doubled from being worth three billion pounds to over six billion. We've left the EU, and we've come through a global pandemic. And all these three factors have had a really dramatic impact on the sector. And that's been particularly borne out by the independent sector and a huge amount of issues that are also facing um, the skilled workforce as well. So while the industry is booming, we had to really take a completely blank sheet of approach to looking at where that national lottery good cause funding could best be used for max maximum impact. So we have created a strategy, Screen Culture 2033. It's a strategy which encapsulates everything that BFI does. What we're here to look at today is how we're going to spend national, national lottery funding. Um, so over the next decade, we are going to use our lottery funding to drive change. Um, there are four major objectives and three key strategic principles. Um, and the strategic principles are something which will be woven through every single national lottery um, fund uh, that we have created under the new plan. They're a commitment to equity, diversity and inclusion and embedding anti-racism and accountability, ensuring that our work reaches across the nations and regions of the UK so that everyone can benefit and reducing our environmental impact and leading the sector towards net zero. Our four objectives, uh, which are our long-term ambitions for our national lottery um, period, are sitting underneath the national lottery strategy. And there are four objectives, which are, we want to see in 10 years time, a world in which everyone can experience a great range of stories on screen. Anyone can create original screen work from first time creators to world-class professionals that our workforce is skilled and reflective of the population, independents and cultural organisations can adapt and thrive in a changing landscape. These objectives and outcomes have informed our funding plan. Amir, we can move on to the next slide now. Um, and finally, I just want to show you how whether the filmmaking funds fit into the overall national lottery funding plan. Um, so we will be spending over the first three years of our National Lottery Strategy, we'll be spending £136 million. Um, we did a huge amount of consultation in the run up to publishing the strategy and thank you to all of you who will have been part of that. Um, our consultation clearly pointed to three areas where the lottery funding would be best spent with maximum impact. These are audiences and audience development, education and skills. And as you can still see, our commitment to filmmaking remains our largest commitment within our National Lottery portfolio. And with that, I will hand over to Mia, who will take you through the new filmmaking fund. Wonderful, thank you, Harriet. Um, so I am gonna present, um, as I said, I will do some of the presentation and then I'm also gonna hand to some of the team. Um, and just on the point of the team, I would just like to acknowledge um, that we put out an announcement yesterday uh, that the, the, the head of editorial, Natasha Wharton, Fiona Morham, head of production and editor at large, Lucy Frankie, will be um, stepping back soon in the next coming months. And just want to acknowledge 
um, the whole team's contribution to this, but particularly their legacy, a lot of their enormous amount of their contribution went into informing this plan. And I would just like to acknowledge um, the team. You will hear from some of them, as I said, but there is a team of 15 and I just wanted to tip my hat to them. I'm not wearing it, but um, it's there metaphorically. Uh, so I just wanted to walk you through the plans for, uh, we have a new names, which is just makes it really clear who we are serving and what we are doing, um, rather than the more kind of generic film fund of your. Uh, and this is how it splits out. So we have um, the core of this is obviously for production and then a commitment, continuing commitment to development. BFI network, 7.8 million towards uh, shorts and talent development and early stage career. Documentary, a new creative challenge fund, which I'll explain a bit more about soon and uh, funds yet to be announced. So I'm gonna break it down. Uh, so development is now into, into two pots. The project development fund as usual, and all of this is open as of today. So you can go to the website and find all the new fund guidelines and forms. Um, so development fund is open now for, for project development as before. And the creative challenge fund is new and launching later this year. And I'll break that down a bit more um, shortly. And then we have uh, demarcation in terms of production funding pot. So we have now the discovery fund, which is for debuts, of three and a half million pounds or less. Impact Fund, which is specifically for second features of the director and beyond, and also for debuts that are three and a half million pounds and above. High Budget Shorts, which is called Future Takes, and that's already launched. And then we have our support for immersive and animation. And I just wanted to also acknowledge that lottery players are the ones that we have to thank for this good cause funding. And uh, it really helps to acknowledge that, but also to understand what drives lottery, which is it's good cause funding. It's there for the public good, not over private gain. And it's there where the commercial sector cannot be um, if at all or entirely. And so just reiterating our backing that we are here to back a bold range of diverse stories and storytellers. And it's not just fiscal support, it's also creator support and across the whole of the process and beyond. And I'll get a bit more into that shortly. And so this plan is very much informed by extensive consultation, listening to uh, BFI's own economic review of independent film, lived experience. So I literally have a lifetime of, of experience um, now. I started as a teenager and we're now several decades, three decades later and a bit of change uh, on that. And I've worked across the whole of the sector from distribution to exhibition. I've been a producer, I've run my own company for 20 years. And then latterly as a cultural activist with Reclaim the Frame Birds I View uh, as a mission to bring ever greater audiences to films by women. So I care very much about equity, diversity, inclusion that drives everything that I do. And also very much informed by the extensive experience of the team and input from our colleagues across the whole of the organisation. And what steers all of our decisions are our funding priorities. So these are incredibly important to map against as we decide which, what we can and can't support. And equity, diversity, inclusion, as I said, is very much centred. UK wide, that this is accessible across the UK and that there's a strong representation across the country as much as possible. Impact and audience, so cultural impact and audience impact because this is about public good and therefore public impact is incredibly important to it, that what we make needs to be seen and accessible. And talent development and progression creative risk-taking and environmental sustainability. Those are all our priorities. And this is, these are just some of our recent films. Um, these are films that have just either appeared or appeared last year. I'm sure everyone's heard of all of them, but just shout out Scrapper, which won the Sundance World Dramatic Competition Prize uh, this year and will be released by Picture House later this year. Girl by Adora Onashile. Uh, which was also at Sundance, amazing reviews and an incredible proud moment uh, when that film took over 
all of the screens at the GFT, Glasgow Film Theatre, for the Glasgow Film Festival opening night, which is a really momentous occasion. Triangle of Sadness, the Palme d'Or winner, uh, and we backed that uh, primarily um, as a minority UK co-production, very much led by UK producer and UK lead, and Blue Jean, Georgia Oakley's uh, superlative debut, After Sun, what, one of the most beloved films of the of the last year and certainly one of the most decorated debuts and Oscar nom for best actor this year and then Rye Lane which just came out in the UK in 400 plus cinemas via Disney Searchlight those are just a few um, so we have 7.2 million to spend in development um, so that's across project development as usual the changes here are that early stage producer overheads have been increased. So recognizing that the cost of living crisis, uh, just thinking about what we could do and particularly recognizing that producers in the early part of their career are traditionally not earning much money at all. And so we've adjusted it. So people with, uh, with one, two credits or, or zero credits at the point at which you're applying and we're funding you, that you will get a higher producer overhead. And then this is rolling fund as usual, but we will close in August for a reset. And then there are new inclusion targets. And that is obviously open to live action and animation. Creative Challenge Fund is new, and this is opening later this year. So we're in the middle of writing our guidelines. We wanted to get all of the main funds open first, and then the new one will launch later this year. And this is in recognition of how big our development slate is, how much, how important it is to decentralize some of that work. And so this is a fund which will fund production companies and other screen organizations who demonstrate a track record in this area to uh, stage labs and development programs that are specifically designed for, pro to, for advancing projects and for creative practice. And so the idea is to, to create more of an inclusive and exciting approach to project development and to creative practice. It's not training. So it's specifically for, as I said, more enlivened kind of format mixing or um, it could be peer to peer support, mentoring, shadowing, all kinds of ways and approaches into advancing projects. And then I would um, I'll hand over shortly to colleagues to walk you through how our production fund will be demarcated. So we have 29.4 million across the three years. And I'd like to hand to Louise to introduce the new Discovery Fund. Thank you, Mia. Uh, so the Discovery Fund is our debut features fund for all the debuts budgeted below and up to 3.5 million pounds. We'll be running it in three rounds per year. The first is open now and it's the shortest opening window. This is in acknowledgement that the fund has been closed for a while and we're aware that people have got projects ready to apply and sort of looking for shoot soon. So if you are looking at a summer shoot, then this is the one to apply for. Otherwise, we suggest you might want to wait for some of the later rounds. So the first round is open as of today until the 24th of April. Our aim for discovery is that we fund approximately six debuts a year. Uh, debuts have been a very high priority for us over recent years, and that will continue. And I hope and we feel with the Discovery Fund, we'll be able to assess projects with more like for like, rather than having a higher budget projects and second features in the same conversation as those uh, lower budget debuts. We'll still be assessing according to our priorities. So just to re-emphasize that as National Lottery funding, we're here to support and progress filmmakers and producers from underrepresented groups, projects making cultural impact, projects which have a risk factor, meaning they wouldn't have the same access and opportunity to commercial money, projects which represent the UK across the board rather than just London and the Southeast, creative risk-taking projects and projects which are designed in an environmentally sustainable way. Every time we assess as a team, we discuss the ways a project engages with our priorities. So although it is a part of the form and there are boxes, it's not just a box ticking exercise for us. It's a very live part of the discussion. And if a project doesn't meaningfully engage with our priorities, it's really not likely that it would get through. Once an award is made, our team is on hand throughout the process to support filmmakers making their debut across the script work, budget, financing, 
all through prep and production and post. Um, so that's, yeah, that's the Discovery Fund. I'll hand over now to Emma, who's going to talk through the impact section of the fund. Hi, everybody. So the, the Impact Fund is for um, experienced filmmakers mm -hmm. whose projects would struggle to find um, money in the commercial sector in full or in part. Um, it stems from a recognition that independent filmmaking, particularly in the current climate, is challenging, that making a second feature at times can be as difficult as making a first, likewise for the third and beyond. Um, we consider auteur films to be fragile, particularly in the current um, context. And so the, the fund has, the impact has been designed uh, for, for, for these projects. Um, so we're aiming at experienced directors from uh, second film onwards, um, directors who've established a career in another format. So for example, artist filmmakers or uh, TV directors. Um, the rationale being that um, debut filmmakers shouldn't have to compete with these uh, directors who have who are successful in in other formats. Um, the impact format fund is also for de debuts with a budget higher than three point five million. Uh, so those are the directors who wish to work um, at a larger scales, projects with cast attached, um, projects with significant funding from the commercial sector. Um, and projects which would be restricted by the Discovery Fund. In terms of budget, um, for the second features onward, the budget floor is 1 million and the ceiling would be 15 million, which gives a range. For the debuts, it should be more than 3.5 million, and but less than 15 million. Um, in terms of amounts, uh, for impact, we're looking at a maximum amount of 1.25 million, and the discovery will be a maximum one, 1 million, bearing in mind that we seldom give the full amount to projects, so we're looking at a range between 500,000 and 850,000 for both impact and discovery. Um, the aim for impact is roughly five projects uh, per year. Um, as Louise explained, all our decisions uh, are made um, based on the BFI's core priorities. Uh, for projects in the impact sector, they will have to be ones that have an impact culturally, socially, and commercially. So projects that will find uh, an audience uh, you know, will be more sensitive to products that have sales agents attached, which will attract UK distribution and, uh, and, and beyond. Um, we'll also pay particular attention to projects which support our mission to address underrepresentation in filmmaking. Uh, so we're asking all impact funded projects to uh, support us in giving genuine and meaningful opportunities for upskilling and mentoring and production shadowing uh, throughout the, the project. Um, I also wanted to add that, in essence, we are creatives and we're part of, we're integral part of the filmmaking ecosystem. Uh, so we're also looking for good stories, uh, stories that will have an impact on society, stories, uh, films that we all want to watch. Thank you. So just to shout out the funding that we have been putting towards two incredibly important forms in within the film paradigm. Uh, VR um, and immersive and we have been investing in quite a number of projects. Uh, the most recent one to shout out is Consensus Gentium, an incredible app-based work by Karen Palmer, which just won Best XR Prize at South by Southwest. And also short form, again, another win for a uh, the debutant, which was backed by the Short Form Animation Fund again this year at South by Southwest and a BAFTA nomination for Your Mountain is Waiting amongst many prizes actually across animation, uh, short form animation and immersive. And just to say that both of those where the main production fund is currently closed to um, those forms and we're doing an evaluation uh, and then we will be announcing later this year the support moving going forward. Uh, and just to say that funds, um, Doc Society uh, are open to XR as is Network and also Network is open to animation and feature animation are completely welcome in the development and production funds. So just to be clear that they're catered for elsewhere. And then we already announced our high budget shorts, Future Takes in partnership with Film4 and we had a whopping 450 applications so that's taking some time to get through but we're in the assessment process 
Uh, and I would like to hand over to Morgana uh, to walk through our access and inclusion commitments. Thank you, Mia. Um, jumping straight in, projects back through the Discovery and Impact Fund will continue to have access to step up funding to support crew and HODs from underrepresented groups, uh, wellbeing support, including wraparound care. The additional funding will help facilitate a positive working culture. And we will go further on access support for deaf, disabled and neurodiverse filmmakers. As mentioned by Amma, via the Discovery and Impact Funds, the BFI will seek to work with projects that provide genuine and meaningful opportunities for upskilling, mentoring and production shadowing. In addition to new targets and meeting the new diversity standards, funded films will be required to demonstrate further commitments to inclusion and fostering positive working culture. And to future takes. All future take productions will have access to both an access coordinator and a wellbeing facilitator. Directors, producers, and HODs will have the opportunity to take part in a mentoring program. And then our team, the uh, Filmmaking Fund team will work closely or closer, sorry, with our colleagues in BFI Network, Film Academy, and Skills to reinforce talent pipelines with a renewed focus on tracking talent and supporting talent from underrepresented groups. Over the next 18 months, the team will take part in a suite of inclusion training and development, including, but not limited to, active, um, sorry, anti-racist practice, how to be an active bystander, disability and access awareness training, and supporting trans professionals in the screen industries. We are committed to ongoing, meaningful development for our entire team. Going to hand it back to me. Thank you so much, Morgana. Right, so we have new inclusion targets. Um, all of these will be in our guidelines and on the website. Um, so committing to our inclusion targets across all funds. And um, you can see there, there's a new working class background, um, a commitment 39% of across um, applicants. So that is new. And then there's an also, also a new UK wide target. And also another point that is new, which is a commitment to 20% of funding going to those who have not previously received lottery funding via the filmmaking fund. Uh, so just as a benchmark, you can see our actual, um, how we've done this year. So obviously we're just wrapping, we're not quite at the end of this year, but we've, we've made our commitments. And those are, that's how we're performing. So at the moment, the slate is 66% um, on development, female and non-binary filmmakers, writers, directors, producers, that's a combined total. Production, 64%, uh, black and global majority, writer, director, producer in development, and 35, just over 35% in terms of production awards, LGBTQIA+, 21% development, 16% in production and deaf and disabled uh, representation, 10% in development and 6.11% in production. Uh, we've put those in red to mark out that we are below our targets. And that is why we are putting these front and center to be clear that we need to do better and we will. Uh, so other funds to shout out in the filmmaking family, uh, BFI Network, 7.8 million. There's a wonderful celebratory image of the, the team behind an Irish goodbye. That's such a wonderful sight, them winning the Oscar this year, just a few weeks ago. Uh, that came out of um, Northern Ireland Screen and Network. And so this funding will launch and open soon. So they'll do their own launch. I'm not going to give too much away about some of the changes. They're quite a considerable number. Uh, informed by consultation and um, and also a lot of experience from the teams across the UK and uh, funding for shorts and feature treatments and professional development. Documentary delegated, again, that will be um, through Doc Society for the next three years. They again will do their own launch. That will be in a few weeks. So they will open then and lay out their priorities and how their funds will work. But again, supporting development production, professional development programs uh, within the documentary sphere. And those are images from two of 
many incredible films that have come out in the last couple of years, particularly. Uh, is there anybody out there, Ella Glendening's groundbreaking feature that premiered at Sundance and was at South By and CPH Docs and Thessaloniki and is doing an incredible festival run and the beloved A Bunch of Amateurs by Kim Hopkins, which is just such a beautiful piece of work that came out last year. And then also shouting out Global Screen Fund. We're not the only place. So you can also come to the BFI and direct yourselves to the Global Screen Fund. Their priorities are different. And this is about international distribution, business development or co-production are three different pots and a really strong team run that and um, they are open for your questions and they sit separately to us. So just a, an overview, this is what the new fund structure looks like. So development, creative challenge fund, and then production demarcated into discovery and impact, documentary delegated again through Doc Society, network sits um, autonomously, high budget shorts, future takes in partnership with Film4 is, is also in partnership. It's a partnership between us, our fund and network. So it's collaboration that's truly UK wide. And then short form and immersive will announce our commitments, um, our new offers to those later this year. Application process, uh, those are, we, we have a commitment to greater transparency and you'll be messaged uh, throughout the process. Uh, those are the timelines we commit to in terms of responses. Changes are around access. So you can now give video answers in certain points in the application process and increased accessibility for applications and guidelines following an evaluation and also you everyone has the choice to deliver a creative pitch via video and a clearer application form and greater transparency as i said uh, so in summary this is a rewiring of the funds and it's an adaptation informed by evidence consultation and lived experience we know that a lot of what happens comes through grassroots and people come up through the ranks and it, the progression is not always linear. It's very often non-linear and there are lots of different paths. And sometimes our support has to be transformational and sometimes it's transactional. And so this plan countenances all of those approaches and all of those um, career paths. And restating our commitment to equity, access and inclusion, centering fund priorities so it's really clear how we are guided and how we make our decisions. We're a public access fund, so we're open to everyone and everyone, every application gets looked at fairly. And emphasising also a holistic approach with less money, we have to also dial up the support that we give across the process. So it's not just the expertise and the guidance and the extra support for access and inclusion and career pro progression, but also our contribution to improving working cultures. And also uh, we're just in the process of hiring actually a replacement for Katie Ellen, um, who left us to go to Hanway. And that is a, a senior exec role supporting our festival, how our films play, um, get premiered at festivals, uh, working with sales agents, also being very active in the finance plans and help supporting producers and filmmakers throughout the process. And also, um, last but not least, uh, ensuring that our films get distributed and get seen and that public impact is as, as big as possible. And then we will also regularly review and evaluate around our targets and our KPIs and how we are and aren't meeting them. And just a final, a final point that we just acknowledge that we are part of the UK film ecosystem and we were, lottery is not the only answer, but we know that it's an important uh, one. Sometimes for many, it's the only, especially at the early stages of career or when you're taking particular creative risks where the commercial sector may not be there for you. And we want to work in collaboration, in community, in partnership with rigor, transparency and openness and care, underscoring care on all fronts. And now we'll get to any questions. So uh, there is a question on the vision, what is going to replace the vision award? Uh, so important for quality, diversity and inclusion principles, otherwise only privileged emerging indie producers are going to be able to thrive and underrepresented producers who tend to support those stories will struggle. 
Um, so the point is, um, with at, with less money, we know we and we know that w with working from industry and from the economic review of indie film findings that support for producers is incredibly vital as is building better business resilience obviously incredibly important i know that myself having been a producer for a long time um several of our team have been producers um but with reduced funding it's led to di difficult decisions and sadly we cannot at the moment continue with the vision awards with less money um, so there's a better deal for producers in the development fund who are emerging, as I said, and also there is a £2.4 million lottery business development programme, training programme that will work with a partner across the UK, and that is about funding um, training, professional development, uh, as well as um, company funding. I understand that's not within our department, so that's via skills and that's going to come in the um, in, that's going to be launched soon. Uh, so, but as I said, Creative Challenge Fund is open to production companies. So that's uh, a kind of another way of of supporting the sector whilst also earning uh, to like to run labs and programs. So I hope that answers your question. And then, can writers apply on their own to the Creative Challenge Fund, or do they still need? to have already attached a producer. So Creative Challenge Fund is for people who will be running labs. So we will, so you as filmmakers will apply to the people running the labs. So there's a piece in the middle, which is us funding the people running the labs, and then you'll apply to them and it will be up to them. We would like to make sure that there's an, a spread of, of, of offers and we understand that often it's hard to find a producer. So we would make sure that so, some of those labs are open to people without in order that part of what you you gain from that program may be finding a producer. Um, and then for impact funding, so I invite the team to answer anything if they feel um, they'd like to add. Uh, Jennifer Monks, hello Jen. Um, for the impact fund, do you need to apply with match funding in place already? I guess that the reality is for bigger budget productions, um, you may well have already been out there or you'll be in the middle of of fundraising whilst applying to us and waiting for us to come back to you. So um, we we um, it's not part of the guidelines, but I mean, it's a reality of the market that you'll likely be fundraising at the same time and, and have some attachments. It will depend, we don't want to be prescriptive. So it's not a part of the criteria. I hope that answers that question. Um, and so the funds are open now. I just want to make that point. Um, so yeah, the so Chris Phillip, can you please clarify which funds are currently available for immersive filmmakers? So uh, Doc Society will be available to anything that has a documentary aspect to it that and that is immersive. There are several projects that that Doc Society have funded in the past that are XR. Uh, and also network and then um, so we're closed for for the time being but we will have an offer later this year um, can't be specific about time frame because we just need to evaluate our impact and reformulate um, but we will be open later and uh, thank you Nikki nice work BFI will the filmmaking fund execs be working across assessing all strands or will be that will there be different teams um, there will be, um, it will be the same team working across all, all the strands. That's correct. Yeah. So we've, that's why actually the rounds help because it means that we can kind of time um, the work of evaluation. Are there funding rounds for the impact fund? No, uh, it's a rolling application. So um, you can apply at any time. And uh, will support for first time producers be equal to that of first time directors through the Discovery Fund? Um, yeah, we have a strong commitment to first time producers. And so, yes, the in terms of the support, absolutely. Um, Morgana, do you want to speak a bit further to the support that will? I mean, we're talking in terms of our mentoring, we're talking about that support being across the board. So if there is a separate writer, um, or often more commonly it'll be writer, director and producer. The point is that we have a wraparound package of support. Morgana, do you want to say anything extra? Just that um, for first time producers, 
we will support them through um, mentoring also we will one of the things we're going to plan to put in place is onboarding and offboarding processes so we can really engage with producers and directors around how they want to their terms of engagement how they see the relationship working with us our expectations their expectations but also an overview of the entire process of being funded by the filmmaking team thanks morgana uh, can you expand on how you'll meet the sustainability priority? Uh, I might ask Harriet um, the, to add to the commitment across the BFI more widely. Um, certainly, we'll be working with, we are working with the Albert tool, and that is a commitment to be used across all productions. Harriet, do you want to say anything further? Yeah, no, I'm fine on that. So, yeah, as we said, we've, we've got three core conditions. All our funding will be subject to the, the sort of key underlying principles, sustainability being one of the key ones. Um, in terms of the moment, we will be asking people to think about sustainability as they put in their applications, but we're also really aware of the fact that people are not going to be kind of fully ready here. So we will be working with a lottery were a partner funded by National Lottery Funding who will be able to help and support uh, productions who are receiving funding from us over the course of the um, life of the lottery strategy. Um, so I think we, we haven't quite announced that yet as to who uh, we'll be partnering with, um, but so there'll be more detail on that to come. Um, but certainly it will be a step up from the work that we've done around sustainability in the past. Um, and keep an eye out for an announcement on partners on that. Thanks. Thanks, Harriet. Um, what is the status of the applications at the end of the last round? Uh, I think we are, we should have got to everybody by now. Um, we've certainly been through the assessment process. Does anyone else in the team want to say, speak to that? Um, I'm, I'm happy to speak to it. Oh, Louise. Yes. Yep. Hi, yes. Uh, yes, they are almost all done. So we did get, uh, we're aware with the funds closing, we got a really, really high number of applications, for both production and development. Uh, so I think there are just a few remaining now, but they all would have been assessed according to the previous guidelines, you know, before any of the changes. And uh, anyone who hasn't heard will be hearing very, very soon. Thank you, Louise. Um... And then what will the team structure be going forward? Are you hiring people to replace the senior team who are leaving? Um, so obviously we're reviewing the structure and to in light of the, these new changes that we're just announcing today. And so we have to now look at, yeah, how best to support the new structure and the new funding priorities and the new funding pots. And we will, be publishing details in the coming weeks and there will be a new look team in place we will be hiring um, so that will be by the end of the summer um, and I think that's probably it so we're uh, we're at 50 minutes I'm aware that we said this would be 45 I think we have a few more um, questions to answer um, right where are we just, you know, just clarify something from Simon Perry, a feature film that is not a debut but has a budget of less than 3.5 cannot apply to the filmmaking fund, is that right? No, actually, you can reply, apply. Uh, so um, it's for projects that are from 1 million and upwards to 15 million. Thanks, Emma. Uh, Cheryl Crown, um, thank you, very clear. Will development funds be available for international stories not set in the UK, but created by international resident UK talent working with UK producers or resident in UK? And yeah, can development funding be less UK centric re-stories? Um, Louise, do you want to take that? I mean, we definitely are, avail are open. It, yeah, yes, we, are, we are open to it. Um, I think it has been challenging in the past just because we have so much UK wide, UK set uh, applications. But I think, yeah, I'd have to double check the guidelines, but the updated guidelines, but as far as I'm aware, that is possible. It's, it's provided because in this instance, it's a UK, it's an international resident in the UK with a UK producer. So the entire team is in the UK. So in, 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 in theory, yeah. 
uh, it should be okay. And there's one thing that I'd also wanted to uh, touch upon is in terms of um, finance plan. So we don't fully fund finance for both discovery and for impact. And um, yeah, and then also in terms of uh, does do you have to have finance funding in place? It's it's best to present a finance plan that is realistic. So even if you know you haven't secured all the different uh, financing on your finance plan, it's just best to present something that looks like realistically uh, this is achievable. Thank you, Emma. Um, okay, I'll take Sam Morley's um, question about writers and discussing supporting early career progression. Um, we do have um, a target, actually, which we haven't announced yet, but a target for writers and separate to directors. So because there is an, uh, a clear over indexing of writer director support and we have so we have set a target. And the point also of the Creative Challenge Fund is that that is open, will be open, obviously will be funding. So it's in, in, in effect a delegation will be funding production companies and other screen orgs to run they could be year long development programs or they could be short. And the point being that those are there to support writers, directors and producers. And they, we definitely want to have an, uh, options where they do not need to come in with a producer or a director. Often I, we understand that that's a barrier. Uh, and definitely network is there also to support early development. Uh, we obviously have to have a production company apply for project development um, but again the whole point of labs and programs and also the work that network do is also to create space, more and more spaces that people can connect and meet and and find ways to collaborate because we recognize that that's a very hard thing to accomplish often to actually connect with producers um, I hope that answers that question but definitely commit committed to quite a number of the films um, of, of the last slate have been separate writers and directors. We do very much keep an eye on that. Um, and are there any other? I think we've probably answered most of the questions, actually. Is there a link to this presentation? Uh, we will be putting this online. So yes, there will be. Um, we'll post the webinar soon. Um, will you consider films with international teams and a UK part, such as what you what you did with Triangle Sadness and the U Funds, or is that, that an exception, or is that the focus of GSF? That is, uh, there are, you can still come to us with co-productions without question. We are open to co-productions, and we do ask that you look at Global Screen Funds as well, and because that is obviously their priority. And but you can also come to us too. Uh, will the new fund welcome debut writers over 50 or is it focused mainly on younger writers? No, we are definitely not ageist and we never look at, at ages of people. And so you just need to come in with a producer. That's all. I mean, Louise or Emma, does it, do you want to speak to that? We definitely encourage. I was, yeah, I was just going to say, re-emphasize that point. It's, yeah, the age is not, uh, it's debut writers are definitely of interest to us. Um, but yeah, the age is not is not a factor. Um, what percentage of a feature, first feature will you be funding? I don't think it's clear. Uh, we um, so as Emma said, we can, there's less funding. We can't hundred percent finance. So traditionally, we are looking at uh, either a na another national fund and us, or it could be a broadcaster and us, or it could be a mix of three, or it could be there are a number of instances of late where the funds have been found elsewhere. Private equity is obviously much harder to get, but it's still, we are still seeing it in certain instances. Um, so, the, and we're not prescriptive about the percentage and obviously you have the tax credit. So uh, we're not prescriptive about what you can apply for. Um, so I think we're nearly there to wrap. Anything that we've not answered, I think we will, we can take offline and respond to separately. Um, so I think we should wrap. So thank you to everyone for sticking around. Thank you to everyone who's contributed. Thank you, Harriet and Amma and Morgana and Louise. 
And thank you to the team, a big shout out to the team and all the inputs we've had helping us do this and to the colleagues across the BFI, we really couldn't have done it without you.